Merry Christmas, everybody! Welcome back to Vlogmas with me, the Hamburglar. Oh, hello. Welcome home. We're back. Um, before I get started, the kids are in the bath, right there, with the door open. They've been playing sink or float this morning, so of course they then wanted to get in the bath. Um, so if you struggle with background noise whilst I'm talking, which I totally get, then you might want to skip this little chatty bit. Hopefully they're not going to be too noisy, but that is kind of going to be the theme of the day because we are home all day with the kids and I'll get more into that in a minute. Um, so welcome back to Vlogmas. It is Tuesday the 20th of December. My name is Laura of Penrose Knits and it's been an eventful 24 hours. I literally just uploaded episode 13 and honestly in my head I wasn't going to upload it at all. I'd taken the footage for it but the day had gone so south and at the end of the day feeling so like S-H-Y-T that um, I just didn't think it would be a nice vlog to post but actually looking back at it I got some nice footage of the, the snow and the cottage and I feel like there was some valuable chat in there as well that I'll probably look back on and will serve as a good reminder for myself and maybe for some of you guys I don't know so I uploaded it and I'm glad I did because I feel like I've kind of put the weekend to bed now I was a little bit gutted that the holiday kind of didn't turn out to be exactly what I'd hoped it would be which is a bit of a running theme in my life so I'm being gentle with myself um, we had a lovely first day, but the second day definitely wasn't what I wanted it to be. And the morning that we left was even worse. The kids were on really, really, really bad form. And basically at 8.30 in the morning, I just said, right, that's it. We're going home. I've had enough. We packed up and we left. We had to be out by 10 anyway, but it was like, right, okay, enough. And it turned out that I was right in my kind of gut feelings and that they were both guys it turns out that i was right in my gut feelings about them being poorly um penny's fine um but jeff last night really really took a turn and um i was quite concerned because of the strep and the scarlet fever going around and i called my i called my doctors and they were able to call me back in a few hours which was amazing like i didn't call them until like three o'clock in the afternoon and I still managed to get a call back from the GP which is amazing had a chat with her on the phone about both kids she said that I it, she said that it doesn't sound like strep or scarlet fever so not to panic about that but she did issue us a prescription for some antibiotics just to be safe um so Mr Penrose went on a little late night pharmacy mission and actually managed to find some amoxicillin um, we couldn't get it in liquid, we only got it in tablet form, so it's going to take a bit of trial and error to figure out how best to give it to them. We tried it, we put it in Jeff's cow pole last night because his temperature was the highest I've seen him have a temperature in a very, very, very long time and it came on very, very quick. So we got it straight on the cow pole and we mixed the amoxicillin in with the cow pole, which worked. And then this morning we put it in a cup of milk for them both. Penny was fine because she's on quite a low dose, but Jeff's on double the dose that Penny is and he struggled to drink the milk because I think he could taste it. So I think we're going to try it in like Nutella at lunchtime or something, maybe in a hot chocolate, I don't know. But as you can hear, they are both feeling better. <laughs> Jeff was a bit groggy this morning and he woke up at three in the morning with a high temperature again, so he had more cow pollen. It was a bit of an up and down night, but they are in better spirits today and I'm hoping he's going to bounce back from it. I expect he'll probably go downhill again tonight as they tend to do when it's like this, but 
I'm just like, uh, let's just chill out at home, let them burn it off, and hopefully, fingers crossed, they'll be feeling better in a few a few days time, ready for you know what. Why am I saying you know what? We all know it's Christmas. <laughs> so, I wasn't planning on spending these few days stuck at home, but part of me isn't too gutted about it. Today, the kids were supposed to have a play date, cancelled, and then they were gonna go to my mum's in the afternoon and the evening, because it's my husband's first day at his new job today. And I was gonna go and meet him after work and like have a little celebratory drink, but that's not gonna happen because I just couldn't risk, you know, giving whatever my kids have got to my mum. That wouldn't be fair. And she spends Christmas with my grandma, and it's important that we don't get my grandma poorly. So we're just gonna hunker down, and I'm not mad about it because today is gonna be one of those like after holiday reset days. Thank you, past Laura, for and past Ben, to be fair for leaving the house in a good state. It wasn't perfection, but it was clean, it was tidy, the dishy was on, there's been a wash load finish, which I need to fold now, which I'm kind of looking forward to doing, because it means I can sit and watch a vlog mess. Um, and it just meant that when we got home, I could dump the bags. I unpacked like the food and stuff, but I just dumped everything else and we just sat down and was like, we are home, that's it, let's rest and chill. And this morning I've got the energy, I feel invigorated. I've already unpacked the suitcases, which, you know, historically are usually left for a week. But I've unpacked all the suitcases, I've got washing lined up, ready to go. I've been doing little bits of cleaning, tidying. I've fixed my camera. I've had my blooming blo broken vlog camera for the past three days with everything I needed to fix it and I just didn't do it. To be fair, I enjoyed filming on my big camera. I really like the quality of the image that it gets, but the file sizes are big, which means uploading takes longer, both from the camera to my iPad and then onto YouTube. So it does make the whole life a bit easier. I was also filming on both cameras. I was anything talking, I was doing on this camera, everything else in the camera. So there was like two separate memory cards, two separate uploads. So it is easy just to have it all in one go. And today it's just gonna be pretty much like montages of me like sorting, cleaning and tidying and all that kind of thing and the kids. But hopefully some knitting as well. Seven minutes guys and I haven't even got started. So uh, we should probably get on with all the bits that I'm sat right next to here on my bed. First of all, the main event, the thing I know you're all on tender hooks about. <laughs> I've been enjoying working on this so much more since I ripped it back. On the way home yesterday, Penny! On the way home yesterday, I knit loads and loads and loads of sleeve and I did more yesterday afternoon at home and more yesterday evening and I'm nearly nearly finished my first sleeve because I'm expecting it to grow a little bit as well I'm not going to go too far but I've got some very interesting things to talk about when it comes to the sleeve because I have made some modifications just to kind of help keep my mind at ease with the right way now so yes, as you can see, the fit is much, much better. It's not tight, it's, it's currently like, maybe like two centimeters positive ease, but it hasn't been blocked yet, obviously, in its rib. But as you can see, the fit is much, much better. The first modification I did is I have added short rows. Any excuse for short rows? Basically, I pulled up my copy of the Ingrid Sweater by Petite Knit and found the short row shaping because it's a drop shoulder, kind of a similar fit, and I know that I like the short row shaping because I've made it. And I found the stitch count that was closest to the one I had, and I've inserted some short rows right here. I did it. Am I going to be able to show you? Hang on, I'll try and give you a close up. So hopefully you've been able to see that it's like a bit of a wedge and I did that short row shaping in one by one rib for two reasons. One, because it's just easier to keep track of and two, because the short row shaping on the shoulders is in one by one rib and I feel like if the designer was opting to put short rows in, that's what she would have done. And the reason I decided to put them in was just to give this part of the arm a little bit more room and also if I had gone for the recommended ease then this drop shoulder would have come it's currently here it would have come more like down here so by adding in this wedge of short row shaping here it kind of brings that that drop shoulder seam down a little bit so you can see like 
I changed to the normal stitch pattern right here. It's like the short rows come in and then I think I did one more row of one by one rib and then changed to my normal stitch pattern. So I feel like it's slightly closer and I've also changed the way I did my decreases. I have decreased a lot less frequently. I think before I was doing every 10 rows, now I'm doing every 16 rows because my, my row gauge is tight anyway. But then after I got down to kind of past the elbow, I started to feel like I was having a little bit too much fabric in the sleeve still. So after the elbow kind of crease, I've now reduced back down to every 10 rows. And I'm gonna do one more decrease row, and then I'm gonna start the cuff. In the pattern, the cuff is really, really long. It's six inches, which would have been like, I haven't got a measuring tape near me, but it was really, really long. And I think I would have been all right with that, but I just couldn't pitch that on my husband. So I'm gonna keep going with the stitch button probably till about here and then do a probably a three inch cuff. I looked at the cuff on my Dartmoor, which is right here. Um, and it's a deep cuff. So I think it will still be kind of true to the vibe of the pattern, but just a little bit less deep. This is the cuff on my husband's single mole and it's, I think it's three, I think it's also, three. oh no it's not, I think it's about two to two and a half inches on the single mole, but I'm going to go a little bit further just because it's not going to be tight to his wrist, it's a bit looser and I like it like that. I've got a big pile of knitwear here because I desperately need to do a great big depilling session. <laughs> I've got four sweaters here that desperately need depilling. And it's interesting because I've, I feel like I've never really had to do that before and it got me thinking about what I made last year and how I made a lot of stuff last year but I don't really wear much of it. And I think it's a good sign that actually as I've developed in my knitting journey, my design journey, I'm able to kind of hone in a lot more on what I actually want to wear now. So I've got a little, little stack of stuff that need to be shaved. I don't expect to get it all done in one go because it, it will take a while and a lot of it is very, very pilly because it's like the first shedding. Like I haven't depilled my Eclair yet. I haven't depilled my Eclair, my Dartmoor or my Charles Aosta yet. So they're like, they've properly shed and they need to be nice and clean. And I want them to be all nice and smooth because I'm going to be wearing them a lot over the next few months. So that's where we are. I'm hopefully gonna be finishing this sleeve today and starting the next one. I decided I'm gonna get two sleeves done before I continue the body. I think I've already mentioned this because then it's gonna look a lot more like the finished thing. And even if I've only got a little bit of body to go, he's gonna be able to see where I'm going with it when I gift it to him, whichever state it's in. The next thing I've got to show you is my advent calendar. I have been showing little clips here and there, but I wanted to give you some daylight, true, close-ups because oh it's so stunning i have got the um woolly mammoth fibers 12 tied advent calendars if you have this and you're doing it on the days you're supposed to not like me um i will pop a, a timestamp in here for you to skip to when i finish talking about and sharing the yarns so I've got days um, seven, eight, and nine to show you here. And today I'm opening day 10. So it's a proper little advent for you. Um, I'm gonna start with seven, which I, I showed a clip off, but I don't think I, um, I don't know how much I sh actually showed you of this. I can't really remember, but I think this is my favorite one so far. It's seven swans are swimming and it's just beautiful. It's like completely like, um, it's, very yellowy beige with this beautiful little pop of pink to it and I really really like it and then day eight we've got eight maids of milking which is this beautiful baby blue absolutely gorgeous and I love these together I think they're really really nice together and then day nine is nine ladies dancing of course and when I opened this I couldn't really see if it was purple or brown because I opened it at night but it's definitely purple let me hide it's ever so slightly variegated, highlights, low lights, and actually seven, eight, and nine together, I think are really, really lovely. I'm really looking forward to um, getting them all out, spreading them all out, and then choosing what my first pair of socks will be. A few of you have said in the comments that I'm gonna need three mini skeins to make a pair of socks. So I'm probably gonna go toe up and use one for heel and toe, one for the body of the foot and as soon as that's run out i'm probably just going to do like a long ribbed cuff don't really know we'll see how it goes um i also wanted to show you i've got another set of stitch markers and i think they're my favorite ones <laughs> i 
I love them. This, yeah, these are definitely my favourite. These were from Eight Maids of Milking. Let me give you a little movie watsy. It's the little milk carton man. I love it. I love how it's kind of got like a cow print texture, but it's all white. And the little dress is just so adorable. So yeah, these are definitely my favourite um, progress keepers so far. I love that milky guy. He's amazing. So day 10, 10 lords are leaking. I have no idea what this is going to be like. And I'm very excited. I can't believe there's only three more to open. It's gone so quickly. How many times are you going to hear that this year? Ooh. I had a feeling it would be blue. This is like, oh, next level blue. It's really dark. Can you, can you hear that they're playing burger shop in the bath? <laughs> this, me showing you here is not doing it justice at all. It's incredible. Again, that lovely kind of high, low vibe. I'm now gonna go raiding. I'm gonna go open all my doors to find all my blue ones. Or even four calling birds as well. All of these together. Oh, just make such a beautiful sock. I feel like that would be quite a nice, subtle sock. I'd probably use the, the variegated one as like the main foot because I want to see those little pops of rust. But even like that was your main, that was your socks, toes and heels because it's got that kind of similar vibe to it and then you change to a cuff. Oh my gosh. There's just going to be, I'm doing it now. I'm looking at them all and I'm going to hold them all together. Six geese are laying, so beautiful. It's almost like the pops of pink in Seven Maids of Milking are the same as six geese are laying, so they would be so beautiful together. And with the, is that three French hens? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited for, like, for sock January. Honestly, there are gonna be so many socks in January. <laughs> And the one and five are kind of getting similar as well. They're kind of greeny phases. We've kind of got like pinky purpley yellows, bluey purplies, and we've got some greens. So I'm really, really excited to see what's gonna come next. Looking at them all like spread out now on my bed, I'm kind of like, oh, maybe they should all be together. Maybe I should just make myself like a fun cowl or a fun shawl. I should make some socks with them because they are socks yarn, socks yarns, sock yarns. And I think I would also, whatever I've got left over, like to make a hot water bottle cover because I've been watching Emma make hers. Emma is the dyer behind um, Woolly Mammoth Fibres. And it's so beautiful and I love a hot water bottle so much. And I feel like it would be a really, really nice way to use these yarns. And just, yeah, I think it would be perfect. And even if I just do like different, like the, I can't remember the name of the pattern she used, but it's like a colour work bottle. Um, Emma is always linked below in the descriptions because I, you know, show my advent pretty, pretty much every episode. Um, so if you go over to Emma's channel, she's done a podcast recently where she talks a lot more in depth about the hot water bottle cover that she did, and I'm pretty sure it's a free pattern as well. So that's definitely on my list. I really want to give that a go. So there we go. That's where we're at. Oh my gosh, 20 minutes chat. This is gonna be a long episode. This is feeling a bit more like a podcast than a vlogmas. That's my cue, Penny wants to get out. So yes, let's do some cleaning, tidy washing, and hopefully some knitting. Let's crack on with the day. And everything's bright. Everyone's happy. Spirits are light. I am sitting here thinking alone with my drink. As I do this time of the year Do you remember when love was around When we were aglow The talk of the town When I'm sitting here drinking I can't help but think about you about us as I do this time of the
honest with you, I'm not massively impressed with my English tea shop advent calendar. I was thinking this and then I got a message from Alexandra saying that her and her mum don't think they taste of anything and I think she's right. They're def I definitely feel like I need to brew them for a long time whereas something like um, puka tea um, is like much stronger like you open the bag and it's like poof you can like smell it. Sorry someone just walked past and looked at me. Um, when I was chilling out here earlier I realised that our outdoor Christmas tree had fallen down. <laughs> It was really windy at the weekend, God knows how long it was down for, but I've noticed a lot more people going past doing the Christmas tree trail with their little maps and looking. I guess most people, or at least a lot of people, have like um, finished work before Christmas, So, and all the kids have finished school now, so lots of people going around, so I thought I'd better go out there and sort it out. All the decorations are very heavy, because <laughs> they're all like waterlogged, <laughs> so they're like basically like weighing the whole tree down. Um, I actually found out recently that this is the last year that we're doing the Christmas tree trail. They were only ever going to do it for five years and the lady who organises it says she has noticed that less and less people apply every year. So I'm really, really glad we got involved this year and did like a proper one. Like, I'm really proud of our tree and I love that we have all these decorations. They are all going to be kept. Some of them are looking a bit grubby but they're all washable so should be able to give them all a wash, lay them all out to dry and use them next year for one of our inside treats. Um, I de-pilled my eclair. It was one of those where I was like, oh, I just, I just think the underarms need to and it's not that bad. But when I looked really, really close at it, it was really, really bad. I just use a disposable shaver. I've got an electric like round and round sucky in one, but it's rubbish and it takes ages and it's boring you just say like mm, and like obviously I'm not a big fan of the noise um and then it was actually rebecca from the cray bay who gave me the idea to use a garment shaver a garment shaver just like a normal razor a razor like a beauty razor like super super cheap like you know you can get like a multi-pack for a couple of quid from aldi or whatever and they just work so well and i feel like i've got a lot more control over it i was just going to do the sleeves which i did and they look so good they look like new now this in case you didn't know is my latest design it's the eclair it's in testing at the moment speaking of which i need to go and have a little look at the document because i've got some stuff to update I'll do that now, well, after this. Um, and also, it's got like a stockinette side panel, which comes down into this split, though there is an option in the pattern to not have a split and have like a normal length hem. And I shaved that bit as well. And I wasn't gonna do the body because it didn't like seem that bad, but I did actually go over the cables in the end. I obviously didn't go over the bobbles. But because the like the rays is so little, it just like fit perfectly. And I just went carefully down each um, cable column and it's looking so good and I'm really pleased because it's one of my faves. The release date for that hasn't been set yet but it will hopefully be early February if not end of Jan. It kind of depends on how my testers get on. They basically there isn't like a fixed deadline they also don't have to complete the whole garment. I found with test knits now 99% of the issues are like wheedled out in the first couple of weeks and then it's just kind of going through and making sure and all this kind of stuff um and I haven't done any of the garment shaving yet because I was a bit bored after that one so maybe maybe I'll do my child's day stuff <clears throat> because Penny loves to wear hers in the morning because it's like super warm and cuddly it's like almost like a dressing gown really why am I drinking this? It's too hot. So I just wanted to pop in and like say a little thing about something and like I feel a little bit like silly talking about it but I didn't want to not talk about it. I found out yesterday that I won an Instagrammy. It's something, it's um, arranged by a, um, a maker and yarn Dyer Yarn Supplier, I think, called Ginger and Time. I think they're German. And um, this year, I don't know if they've done it before, but this year they've um, 
created something called the Nitstagrammies. And it was basically just like a little, just a fun little like thing where you can go and like nominate your favourite um, bloggers, designers, podcaster, design and Nitstagram, I think were the categories. And I was nominated for two of them. I was nominated for best vlogger and um, best designer. And like so many incredible people were nominated. Like I think we all knew that Patina was gonna win the best designer, like, I mean, come on. Um, but just to be like considered by enough people to be nominated was like, it made me so happy. I have said this many times before, but I need constant validation. <laughs> so to know that you guys are enjoying my stuff enough to wanna like nominate me was amazing. I did not think I'd win because like I was up against some really big people. But I was thinking, well, if I could win one, I think I'd wanna win the best vlogger one because the vlogs are something that's so like close to my heart and something that's really personal and something I never thought I'd be able to do. So to have won best vlogger and Instagrammy, honestly, I found out yesterday and I was having a pretty sh I was having a pretty rubbish day. And um, it really, really made me very happy and very validated. So thank you to everyone who voted for me. And I've got an Instagrammy. <laughs> I feel really silly talking about it. And I'm like, I don't want to do like an acceptance speech, but I did just want to say thank you to everyone who voted for me because, yes, I feel very, very validated. So thank you. Moving on, I feel like I haven't really done anything today. Honestly, when I finished chatting to you last time, I looked at the clock and it was like 12 o'clock. And honestly, I thought it was like 10. I think it's because we all slept in a bit later today because my husband started his new job today officially and didn't have to be up till like eight o'clock he normally has to get up at like half six so we all kind of had a Mommy, bit of a lie in today the is catching me. Mommy, we found you. And ah. thanks for jumping on my jumper are you the police yeah. are you the bad guy yeah. i caught the bad guy ha 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 ah. is yeah. this your swag bag yeah <laughs> quick bad guy run away run away <laughs> <laughs> they look like bad guy and po uh, police <laughs> so yeah i don't really feel like i've done much like i did a little bit of folding washing and i made some lunch and i've kind of done bits of tidying here and there but yeah it's a weird one i feel like i should have had a lot more to stay but i haven't but i think that's just me needing a chill day we're only three or four days away from christmas mad and i know every single vlog most person says oh my god i can't believe it we're in the christmas oh my god um but it's the truth <laughs> and i feel like i'm definitely looking forward to the gap this year that kind of downtime after christmas it's been a weird vlogmas this year well no it's not that it's been weird but vlogmas definitely hasn't gone the way i thought it would and that's i'm not saying that that's a bad thing I think when I started, I thought that I'd be creating quite a bit more content because I've got a lot more childcare than I did last year. But actually, like it started off really, really well. And then it's kind of took a bit of a dip in the middle, like for me personally, just how I've kind of been in myself and in my head. But I do now feel very excited and very much looking forward to the next couple of days and Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. I'm trying not to build them up in my head. We're trying, that's probably the, the lesson I've learned this Vlogmas is try not to romanticise everything in my head so much and just let what happens happen. So I'm not even going to let myself think about Christmas Day that much other than on like an organisational basis. Look at my shadow in the background there. I'm going to do like a, a duck. Oh my God. Hello ADHD. <laughs> so, speaking of Christmas Day organisation, my food shop arrives tonight between 9 and 10. Um, that's the only time slot I could get, um, but that's also fine because the kids will be in bed and everything will be done. So, I think that's going to make it feel quite real. And then I've just got a little bit of planning to do, kind of like over Christmas meal day. We've got my dad 
and my little brother coming for Christmas lunch. My dad is staying over on Christmas night. So I'm actually quite looking forward to it. And my dad is usually on roast potato duty because he does really good roast potatoes. And my brother will probably be on like kid duty because they both absolutely love their Uncle Rob. So the kids will have lots of entertainment. I can see you, squirrel. Oh, go for it, love. Oh, she had some nice running shoes. Maybe I'll go for a run. Oh, God, it's been a long time. I mean, I'd say if I went for a run now, it would be more like going for a walk, but and I don't like going at night when it's dark. But anyway, I'm rambling now. Season. How did I go this long? Oh, yeah. Let's not waste any precious knitting time. I'm on the curve. Look at this long sleeve. It looks really straight. Like even though <laughs> there's quite a lot of decreases, like you can see all my decreases along here. It looks really just like one single tube. <laughs> so yes, I've made it to the cuff, and I've done. I mean, I don't know how much I've done, but can you see? Like this much here is cuff, yes. Um, and I thought I would bring it along with me for the evening segment. <laughs> it's been an all right afternoon. I ended up doing some more garment admin. I did the my child's Aosta, which was so satisfying. It's like it had this like, haze over the whole thing that was like blurring the texture and it was almost like it was like a white fluffy haze almost like it picked up on the fluff like if i'm wearing my eclair and penny's wearing her um aosta it like it's like it had taken on some of that white fluff so as i was shaving it it was like revealing its true color and it now looks absolutely gorgeous i thought it needed a wash but it didn't it was just like a fuzzy haze of gack <laughs> So it feels all nice and fresh now. The Aosta, by the way, is three strands of We Are Knitters for Nita Yarn held together in its like merino and alpaca. So it is very, very sheddy, but I imagine it will stop shedding eventually. And then I did my Dartmoor as well, and that has, um, that is Drops Nepal Health Drops Kid Silk. So I only gave that a very light shaving because obviously it's got that mohair halo and we don't really want to be interfering with that. Um, but I did just take off the kind of um, the pilly bits. It was mainly on the inside of the sleeves here and on the back, funnily enough. But I guess that's because I, I tend to wear it with my coat. Like I wear it, I mean, I'm wearing it right now. <laughs> I wear it all the time. It's probably my most, and in fact, it, it is my most worn sweater that I've ever made. And I think it's just because it goes with everything. I feel like it, it suits me really well. I love the shape and the size of it. I feel good in it. I can dress it up or dress it down. Like I wore it to my anniversary dinner with my husband with um, like a little black corduroy skirt and tights and boots and makeup. And equally I can just, you know, I just it's just what I always go for. And then I'll probably say my second most worn is my eclair. And I tend to wear that slightly more like occasion times like if i'm going out somewhere nice or if i'm seeing people and i want to feel a little bit more 
done that's what i tend to wear my eclair but i will be making another eclair well i say i will be making hoping my um sample knitter is still on board for making me another eclair but she will be doing the shorter version with no bobbles and the roll neck so that will probably be a little bit more wearable than what i've got right now i made it long because i wanted to wear it with leggings and be like super cozy and that's exactly what i achieved and i love it for that but i am also looking forward to having a slightly more wearable version bear with right they've both got their pudding to actually keep them quiet for a little while my husband is here by the way um it's just they're so used to coming to me for everything. <laughs> um, so, yes, I did have a slight little mishap. And so I will say if you do have a go at shaving your garments with a, a razor, then be careful. I was being so careful. I wasn't being fast or anything. And I don't even know what happened, but I did get a little nip on my thumb. And I was worried for a minute that it would stop me from knitting. And it did feel a little bit sore at first if I put pressure on it basically it's sore but it's like on the outside of my thumb so I am able to knit thank the lord um but yeah maybe I should probably say don't try this at home <laughs> we're all adults here you can you can do what you want the afternoon has been okay so far I did find myself getting a little bit short-tempered actually a little bit wound up and I'm not really sure why I think it was because the house was a mess and I was avoiding it, procrastinating by shaving my garments and like, oh, and now we, do, now we decided to play the piano. Here you go, you got some piano in the background for you there. Um, and the house just felt, it felt like every room was a mess. And I don't know how it got a mess because we've like not really done anything today. Uh, so I enlisted the kids. I It can be a bit of a battle with them and tidying up, but normally once I get them on it, it, they kind of turn it into a little bit of a game. I chassed them up with taking all the toys out from the bathroom when they played single float earlier, drying them off and then putting them all away in their baskets. And since we've made like very clear and separate baskets for each type of toy, it has made tidying up a lot easier and a lot more accessible for them as long as everyone sticks to it. The moment the baskets start getting messed up and combined, the whole thing goes to pot. So, oh gosh, I feel like I'm very blown out. Have I gone too high on the old? There we go. You may or may not have noticed that there has not been a shot of the elf today. And that's because the elf is taking a little break. He's in the North Pole recovering from all that flying to and from Wales. He definitely didn't stay in Wales. He's just having, what have I done there? He's just having a break at the North Pole. Um, I had a little delivery from the Amazon man a minute ago, completely unrelated. Um, and then completely unrelated, I found out that, did you know you get different elves? There were, I thought there was just one type of elf, but no, there's loads of different ones apparently. So, um, I'm looking forward to our elf coming back to us tomorrow and seeing how that goes down and seeing if there's anything different about our elf, you know. <sighs> Don't do it, they said. So yeah, there's your little recap for the afternoon segment. Um, tonight we have our food shop come in. Is it weird that I'm kind of excited? I feel like it's not Christmas until all the food's here. <laughs> and I'm really glad that I did this online order because otherwise I would have been going to do my Christmas food shop like late one night because my husband's working every day until Christmas Eve, yay. So I'm starting to feel a little bit more festive, I think. Tomorrow is gonna be kind of similar to to today it's going to be quite quiet depending on how tonight goes i might take the kids out tomorrow just into town i need to go and pick up my final present and i'm going to brave doing that with them there's going to probably have to be some big talks beforehand and all that kind of stuff because they're not really used to going into big shops with me like peas used to go around the, the supermarket with me they're used to the supermarkets but not like an actual like shopping shop so that will be fun and i think i might take them to like starbucks or something afterwards i mean mainly so that i can get an eggnog latte and then if i'm not happy with any of the substitutions or i realize i've missed anything off my big shop tonight i can pick something up tomorrow and then we should be all good to just hunker down like until christmas eve like that's it we've no reason to go anywhere nothing to do just wait and prepare 
it is taking all my willpower not to crack out a Christmas puzzle. Honestly, I am desperate to start one, but I know that I do. I know that the moment I do, it's just gonna suck away all my time because I can do a thousand piece puzzle in less than 24 hours if I've got like nothing else to do. Um, I mean, I could probably, thinking about it realistically, it's probably like five to six hours I can do it in if I was uninterrupted. And I need every hour I can get at the moment. <laughs> Definitely not gonna be finished, but I do think I can get both sleeves done and a good chunk of the body in time. And then I feel like I should just keep going on this after Christmas until it's done. Otherwise it might just sit and squander for a while. But I am, I will say, and I'm, this is something I never thought I would say, I'm getting a little bit sick of brown. <laughs> I really want some colour. I really want some like colour therapy in my life. So I'll be back with you tomorrow. I have done a um, Q&A over on my Instagram. So I've been... I've had some questions coming in all day and I think either tomorrow or the day after I'm going to answer them during Vlogmas, kind of like spread out throughout the day just, to, you know, for like a, a little bit of something different. And it's funny, like there's some really, really good questions in there. There's a lot of questions about my autism. There's a lot of questions about designing and there's some fun questions like, um, if you could only use one yarn brand or who's your favourite designer that isn't yourself, like some really fun things that I'm looking forward to answering. So that's what's coming up for you. And I think I should probably call it a night there because it's time to get those kiddies in bed. Thank you so much for joining me again today for this little reset day. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling back to normal and I'm ready for the rest of the week. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you tomorrow. Good night. Where's my babies? Where's my babies? Mm. It's Christmas in a glass. The Christmas lights fill the city. There are people everywhere. The snow is falling white and pretty as I stroll on.